Welcome to Mountains of Hope with Mike Murphy. Reboot and transform your physical, mental, and emotional being. This show is transformational from the inside and out. Hear from experts on detoxing your body, rewiring your neural pathways, cleaning up emotional wounds of your past, and living in the spiritual life of your dreams. Let go and start becoming yourself, in tuned with your spiritual life. You'll leave this show with Mountains of Hope. Let's get started. Hey, welcome everybody to the weekly Mountains of Hope podcast coming to you from Medellin, Colombia. I'm your host, Mike Murphy, and also the founder of Mountains of Hope Transformational Health Retreat Center located in Medellin, Colombia. And if you want to learn more about what we do there, you can go to mountainsofhope.com and check us out. What we try to do every week is bring you a little bit of Mountains of Hope right into your home or into your car or into your jogging path, wherever you might be, so you can learn a little bit about how you can heal yourself. And we have a super important topic tonight. I know a lot of people suffer with gut problems, and so we're calling this Mind Your Gut. And we have a special person here with us tonight, my beautiful, lovely wife, Sarah, who is one of the leaders and teachers of Mounds of Hope and is also a certified health coach and knows a lot about the gut and has her own unique special story about it. So, honey, if you would, be kind enough to tell everybody what happened. Thank you, honey. I'm glad to be here. So I'm going to tell you my short version because I could go on like forever. So everything started when we moved full time to the United States. All my friends were saying, you're going to gain at least 18 pounds once you move there. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. No way. So when we moved there, I started gaining weight and I started feeling bloated. And all my hormones were crazy. Of course, I stopped my birth control pills at the same time. And I was like, maybe it's that. Maybe I'm just going to get better. So I was like, hmm, something is not right. I'm getting acne. I'm losing hair. But I did all my tests, my blood work with our doctor, and everything was perfect. And I'm like, I still don't believe. So I found IIN. That's where I did my health coach certification. And I started studying about gut and about food. And I started changing my diet. I started working out. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be fine. Well, that was not the solution. So 2021 was like the year for me when I started like, I'm going to go deeper. Well, We're a wholesome. It's not just what you eat. It's what you think, the way you move. It's everything. So if you don't fix your mind, if you're stressed, if you have depression and you eat the best way, but you work out, you're not going to feel better because your brain is connected to your gut. We're a wholesome. It's like the joke. Who's first, the chicken or the egg? Well, we don't know. It comes a wholesome. So that's when I started go digging and going deeper with, okay, what's happening to me? Well, then I found I had leaky gut. Now that I have candida, okay, I'm working on that. But at the same time, I w- I'm working on my mind. Let me, let me ask you something. Did, did the fact that you moved from Colombia to the United States, was the food different? Was your diet different? What, did, was there anything different? Very idea? different. Okay. Like food in Colombia, it's very organic. We don't have processed food like in the United States. Like our cows are grass-fed. Our hens are like... They eat pasture raised. Free roaming. Yeah. yeah. And um, same with uh, fish is better than eating in the States. So everything is different. Fruit. The, t- the taste is totally different. So yeah, I was used to eating here in Colombia and I can eat. People who know me, they know I can eat. So I started eating the same. I didn't change my diet when I just moved. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to be fine. Because I'm not a food, like I'm not a foodie, like, oh, I'm craving an Oreo. I'm craving ice cream. I'm not that kind of person. So I was like, I'll be fine. Well, no. I started gaining weight. I'm like, that's not who I am. I started feeling bloated. And when I started digging, my functional doctor said, yeah, you open the Pandora door, dot box, when you move to the United States. Because your body was used mm. to the food in here, right. organic food, and we have the best food in the world. And then suddenly you move to the States, you think you're eating the same, but even the water is different. So yeah, you have to change. Let me ask you this, because what I recall is um, two things. Let me say two things. 
One, I remember my grandmother when I was younger. You know, we'd go out to dinner and she'd say, oh, I really like this, but it doesn't like me. And I, I didn't know what she was talking about. Now I totally understand, of course. So what we put into our body is important and what we might be allergic to and what will cause inflammation, right? And the other thing I noticed recently, the last 10, 15 years or so, I'd go out to dinner with friends and they'd always want gluten-free menus and I didn't even know what they were talking about and I kind of even made fun of them. I feel bad about that now. But, you know, for so I realized the importance of that. So... Tell me a little bit, what, what happened to our food and what's this gluten stuff all about? So everything has changed for the last 60 to 70 years, 70 years, because all these big corporations, they're adding a lot of processed ingredients and you have to add a gluten that, uh, that, uh, a lo- an- another com- uh, component that is, um, glyphosate that is poison to us. So they put glyphosate in every food. Because they're trying to spray to prevent that it's not going to die. So my understanding is that before they harvest the wheat, they spray it, like drench it with glyphosate. Yeah. But for you people, at, uh, listeners, if you don't know what it is, it's Roundup, which we use to spray our weeds in our home. So they, they just drench the field with glyphosate, and, and which kills it. And while it's dying, it yields 30% bigger crop. But guess what? All that food is now layered with it's this contaminated. Poison. And so what's that do to our body? It kills our good bacteria. Our microbiome. Yeah. So, so elaborate a little bit on that. So we, like, we have tons of millions of bacteria in our body. So when we eat bad food, we're not feeding the good bacteria. We're feeding the bad ones. Yeah, we're feeding the bad ones. And so it's like a, like a, a bottle all the time. Like the good bacteria against the bad bacteria. Yeah. So they're fighting. But if I'm not feeding the good bacteria, the bad bacteria say, hey, I'm waning. So it's kind of like the Democrats and the Republicans. <laughs> okay, Except we're not going to go gun. that way, but, <laughs> but kind of. Like we're fighting and fighting, and then everything we eat has some contamination. Yep. And, all, and we're becoming allergic to cer- certain food. And the thing is, your body is different from mine. My body is different from another person because the way I used to live or where I grow up, where I was born... Yeah. And the way how I feel. They and, will, and your DNA, your genetics. Exactly. Okay. So that's why, like your grandmother said, even if I like some food, but if it's not good for me, don't eat it. I well, always, you, I well, always, yeah. You told me a story about going out to dinner with your mom last night and you both eat the same thing. She had different effects. Ex- elaborate a little bit. Well, on, tell that story. So what happened is um, <laughs> I changed all my diet. Yeah. So I've been eating really, really good, but I still have my old habits because we're balanced. Right. So I was craving a really big fat hot dog. So I said to my mom, mom, I really want to go. She's like, I haven't eaten that food in months. I don't want it. Okay, let's do it. So she, this morning she called me and she's like, oh, it was horrible. I stay all night. And for me, I was good because I take my probiotics. I take good supplements. I take care of, and I'm taking care of my mind too yeah. so because everything's connected. But I'm not saying I'm going to eat that hot dog every day because then I'm going to ruin my bacteria. Yeah. Once in a while, once every two months, once every two years, it's not bad because we still are humans. So, so when you eat bad food, you're, you're, you're feeding the bad bacteria in your gut and you're doing disservice to the good bacteria. But what about people that have to take antibiotics over and over time or medications? What's happening there? Oh, it's worse because antibiotics kills your good bacteria. So what we always recommend is take a probiotic while you're having the antibiotic and after. I always use like this brand called Mega Sporbiotic. It's really good. It has worked very good for me. Like every person has to research. Maybe it's not good for you. That's why I always said what works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. That's why people have to start like searching. Okay, I eat pepper. It's made me blow, uh, blow, uh, like bloating. Right. Okay, you have to do the research. If that's not good for you, change your diet and don't eat pepper. Right. Start looking what's good for you. And then you will find like the secret sauce. I always said to my clients, okay, if you have a Lamborghini, what are you going to put in the Lamborghini? The best gas. Right. Why do you put the worst crap food in your body? Right. We're like a Lamborghini. This is what you have. Right. That's why I'm trying to improve my health because I'm trying, when I get older, I don't want to have any pain. I want to prevent disease. So anytime is good to prevent. 
So if I don't take care of my gut, I don't care. What, what happens to my brain? If my, if my microbiome's out of whack and my gut, I'm not putting the right food and, and it's not right, what's going on in the brain and how does that work? So what happened is your brain is connected to your gut through the vagus nerve. So everything is connected. So if, you're, like, if your gut is not, is not working, your hormones are unbalanced. Then your brain comes. Your emotions are unbalanced. Then a lot of people are suffering from anxiety, depression. And, and they just like go to the doctor, they prescribe a lot of uh, pills, and they think that's the solution. I'm not saying don't take it because every case is different. But we have to start our own case. Okay, when did I start feeling the symptoms? How is my gut related? How is my brain? How are my emotions? What happened in the last year in my life that I started changing? That's the question we, start, we have to start making for ourselves. Yeah, so what it, what's confusing to me is that what I'm hearing from you and, I, and all the books I read and all the study we do so that we can put on the best uh, retreat in Mounds of Hope is that nutrition, what we put in our body, is crucially important. Yeah. And yet, American doctors, when they go to medical school, they only get a day or so of even that much of nutrition. So it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Any thoughts on that? Well, I think it's horrible because they go to for medicine school for almost eight years, and they don't even see anything about nutrition. So the last couple years, like the last 10 years, 15 years, they start doing some researches about, okay, what's happening? Hippocrates, uh, he said, every disease is starting in your gut. Well, why don't we just say every disease can be healed by your yeah, gut? Yeah. So if we heal our gut, we heal our brain, like emotions, the way we think, this body is going to be healed. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect because we're still human. Right. But it's going to get better. But it's, it seems so unfair or unjust to me that... The quality of the food in America, especially, has diminished so greatly so that the food manufacturers can make greater products. They actually put stuff in there that is addicting to us, but is terribly nutritionally for us. Um, and so, what do people with what do they do? Where do they go to get decent food? What's the answer for people? What I tell my clients is start reading the labels. If there's some ingredients that you cannot even pronounce, forget about that product. Go like product, produce that is like two or three ingredients at the most and try to eat more vegetables yeah. and like fresh food. Not Stop buying the box food, you know? What, what about, because, you know, even if you go to Whole Foods, which costs a lot more, and I know inflation's rampant right now, and people are suffering. People are suffering financially and therefore they can't buy good quality foods and now they're suffering physically. And it just breaks my heart, honestly. And so we grow our own vegetables and mountains of hope. What about people growing, you know, putting a little planter box in their yeah. house and, or these aqua pods or whatever and growing some good vitamins or, or nutrients? I think it's perfect. Vegetables? You just have to, okay, if I live in this state, I will have to do some research. Okay, what kind of food it will grow? And I can have it in my backyard or even in my balcony if I have a condo. There's a, a lot of people are doing that. But even if you cannot have that, Buy regular vegetables. They're not organic, but you're eating vegetables. Yeah. It's not going to be the best, but it's, not gonna, it's gonna be less than buying the pasta in the box that is already made. Yeah. Or um, I forgot that hamburger helper. Hamburger helper. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of chemicals. Oh, yeah. Inflammation. Yeah. Inflammation is one of the biggest trigger with leaky gut, with SIBO, with candida. So we need to start working on our body. Yeah, you know, for you guys watching, you know, I, uh, <laughs> every time I'm with my grandkids, I have to remind them, you know, food does not grow in a box, okay? And the problem is they think it does. And so we got to get natural food. So we need natural air, clean air. We need natural, good, clean water. We're going to talk about on this. Water is very important. One of the yeah. shows, we'll bring that up. But we need good vegetables and good fruits. That is what's going to feed our cells, get our mitochondria, give us the energy, and clear out the brain, clear out the gut. What about products? What about alcohol? Alcohol is the worst because first, it's going to give you inflammation. It's killing the good bacteria. Second, it's not good for your brain either because your brain is aging by the time you're drinking alcohol. So there are some studies uh, that they have made about brain, people who drink every day, 
people who don't drink or people who drinks like occasionally. And you can see the difference of the brain. So it's up to you. I'm not saying don't drink. Hey, I drink once in a month. And I'm not saying, oh, I'm not getting old. My brain is not aging. No, like for me, it's balance. Yeah. But I'm not craving alcohol every day yeah. because I'm trying to be better by the time I'm aging. By the time I'm 60 or 70s, I don't want to have Parkinson. I don't want to have Alzheimer. Like, for example, people who suffer constipation, they have more percentage to get Parkinson's mm. than people who go every day to the bathroom. Why is that? Do you know? Well, because of the gut. Okay. And the inflammation builds Inflammation up. builds. The brain is not working. Everything is connected. So I read a long time ago that almost every illness starts with inflammation. And, that's, and you can feel inflammation in your body, guys. Listen, if your joints hurt when you move, that's inflammation. And so you can feel it in your stomach for sure, I know. But if you're feeling inflammation in your body, then it's begun. And so you need to try to reduce that. There's a lot of ways to... What about like things like tools like meditation to reduce inflammation? So I think it's great. And I'm not going to say inflammation is not that bad either. You need inflammation to heal. When you get a virus, your body needs to get inflammation. Either. So it, you get healed. The problem is when you're in constant inflammation, yeah. Yeah. when you're in constant stress. Yeah. So if you start meditating for 30 minutes, for an hour, you're going to help that. You're going to help to de-stress, to, to get rid of the stress. You're going to help your mind to be in the present. Because what's happening to every human right now, we're always in the future. Yeah. We forget to be in the present or we're always in the past. Right. Like with all this technology, we're always in the past and in the future, not in the present. So when you meditate, you're going to be in the present. Therefore, you're going to help your brain to connect with your God and start helping the inflammation. I'm not saying that's the only solution. No, everything helps. Right. But meditation is really important for human beings. Yep. It's not only for people who does yoga. Right, right. So, you know, as you know, one of my weaknesses in the past has been a can of Coke, right? I think there's some emotional attachment to that when I was a kid. There's some emotional attachment to that from my mother. And so I'll go through this mental gymnastics. I say, hey, my mom drank a Coke every once in a while. A Coke once in a while is not going to hurt me. I go, okay, I'm going to have one Coke, one 12 ounces of Coke a day. What about, what about, what's that doing to my body when I drink a Coke? A lot of inflammation, killing your good bacteria. And not only that, it, a can of uh, Coke, it has like 46 grams of sugar, I think. I'm not sure about that yeah. percentage, but it's a lot. Yeah. So you're putting a lot of sugar that you don't need in your body Yeah. to a lot. So it, you're feeding the candida because candida is it's, it's being fed by sugar. Tell us what candida is. So candida is a yeast that you have in your gut. I'm not saying it's bad because you need candida. Everybody ha needs good bacteria, even a little bit of bad bacteria, but candida, but in a good percentage. It's the overgrowth. Exactly. So what's that do? So it gives you inflammation, headaches, uh, like brain fog, and it can literally uh, not help your hormones. Like right now, what I'm dealing with is my uh, ferritin is not working the what, way it what, should. What is your ferritin? What's that mean? Ferritin is the way iron goes into your body. Absorbs, the way your gut absorbs ferritin is the way it goes to your organs and your body. Like my iron levels are good, but my ferritin levels are really, really low. And the big trigger is the candida. So right now I'm in a treatment for candida for three months to see if my ferritin levels go better. So you're trying to kill off the overgrowth of candida and then your ferritin levels will normalize and that, what will be the health benefit then? Then I'm not going to lose my hair. I'm not going to be sick because if something in your body is not working, you're in balance. Yeah. And if somebody wanted to know whether they had candida or not, do you know of any tests or anything? Yes. Uh, there's different tests. Like you can do um, like a, a stool sample. I did, uh, the one I did calls the oats. I will send you some more information to the people who wants to know more. Uh, and it was uh, literally a urine sample. And it will give you all, literally, all the chemicals you have in your body. Mm. And what about SIBO? What is that? 
So SIBO is overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine. Different kind of bacteria than yes. candida then? Yeah, we have, no, candida is a yeast. Yeast, okay. Candida yeah, SIBO, is a yeast yeah. Is a bacteria. Yeah. A bad uh, bacteria. No, so, so SIBO is overgrowth about, uh, uh, overgrowth of I a small intestine uh, bacteria. Candida is a yeast, okay. like a fungus. And what is the, the disadvantage of having SIBO, the bacteria in your small When it's intestine? overgrowth, so your your gut is not working balance. So, you, so you're gonna have different like different um, types of <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, <laughs> different types of illnesses mm -hmm. or like okay symptoms. So for example, there was some study that that I read that people who suffer for fibromyalgia, they're very common to have SIBO. Okay. So. If you have fibromyalgia, go to the study and look, okay, what SIBO means and do the test. You can go to online, uh, okay, checks to, do, to know if I have SIBO and then try to find a doctor and find a test that you can do and then treat the SIBO. And what is fibromyalgia? What would be the symptoms? What do people experience? So what anyway? happened with fibromyalgia is like it's an autoimmune disease that your joints hurts, you're in pain, like very, very bad pain. Nobody knows because it's like a orphan disease. Like there's no cause. Nobody knows a lot. There are some people who said, oh, you're creating that. No, it's real. The pain is real. For people who suffer that, it's real. What do you think the cause of it? Is it nutrition cause or stress or what is it? Like there's no answer, but I think if you can balance with meditation, with nutrition, with movements, like we're a wholeness. I'm not saying it's going to go away, but I can, like, it's epigenetics. We can turn it on and turn it off, you know? Everybody has to do their own research in every disease to see what works for them and not. So you mentioned epigenetics. What, what is epigenetics? So we all have genetics. Like, oh, my father suffers with blood pressure. That means I'm going to have blood pressure. Well, no. You have that gene, but it doesn't mean that you're going to suffer. But if you keep eating McDonald's every day, if you keep drinking alcohol, smoking, uh, smoke pot or cigar, yeah, you have a lot of change, ch chances to get the blood pressure. But if I don't want to get it because I want to be in advance and I want to be healthy, then I'm going to be, be taking care of my nutrition, do exercise, meditate. The chances to turn on that gene is, are very low. So I know you try to eat gluten-free and you're pretty good at that. Can you give some tips to our listeners, our viewers of how to, be a, how to have a gluten-free diet, everything you do and what they can do to really watch what's going on? So in the States, uh, even the gluten-free stuff are very processed, so you have to read the labels. So what I do is you can eat rice. Rice is gluten-free. You can eat potatoes and they're great for your body. Because people think, oh, I'm not going to eat pasta. No, there's very good brands like Jovial for pasta. They're gluten-free and they taste like real pasta. I love them. But I'm not going to eat that every day. Like, you don't eat pasta every day. So I, I'm, I always said, hey, you can eat really healthy and you can eat nice and, and good. Like, sometimes I just like, okay, I want something juicy. I'm going to make some chicken instead of putting uh, dairy. I'm just going to put coconut cream and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So you're, you're like tweaking, you know, and I'm not going to eat bread. I'm going to eat rice. I'm going to eat potatoes. Sweet potatoes are great for you. Okay. So you got about 30 seconds here. What, what, what's one tip you would give somebody that's really suffering with the gut or the brain fog? What, what can they do to really help themselves. I will go like for 21 days or even for a month, check everything you eat. Okay. I just ate that, this egg. How do I How feel? Do I feel? Yeah. So have like a notebook and yeah. say, this make me feel good. After I ate it, I feel a little bit bloated. Yeah. After I ate it, I had gas or I got constipated. Yeah. So start checking and Great start, tip. start reading your labels. Great tip. Great tip. Okay. So I want to share with you guys, um, First of all, if you go to mountainsofhope.com, uh, just put in your name and your email address and put um, uh, that you, I, I have a gift for you if you'll go there and do that. And just, and the, here's a gift. I just did the seven day 
uh, intestinal cleanse and liver cleanse um, that we do at Mountains of Hope. And I'm going to give you guys a video, a step-by-step -step action item of what you can do at home. You don't have to come to Columbia. You don't have to come to Mountains of Hope. I'm going to show you exactly what you can do from home. The first day when you clean your intestine, it is so powerful. Believe me, you're going to feel so much lighter, so much better. And that's the, just the first day. And it's a deep dive into cleaning your intestine. But after that, then it's a setup to soften the stones that you have in our, we all have in our liver, right? The calcium in our liver becomes little stones. And, and we got to take care of the liver. So the next four or five days are all about softening those stools and, and preparing the body for to flush out all the stones out of that liver. So day six is a massive liver cleanse and tons of stones came out of my body. And again, I feel that lightness. And then day seven is just a cleanup. So I'm going to do a video and take you step by step how you can do this at home easily. It's much easier than you could ever imagine. And it does cost a little bit of money and I'll hook you up with those people. I'll get you the price, best price available. But if you just go to Mountains of Hope and put in the, um, the give us your name and address, we'll send that as a free gift to you. I just want to say one thing is, you know, there's a lot more to health than, than, than what we eat, right? There's also the thing about stress. And I know things are difficult right now for a lot of people. I just read just a, a blog on somewhere online, someone really suffering, a family of four, it's just no money. And so what, what are we going to do? You know, I, I, I really think things are going to get a little bit worse before they get better. I really believe we're going from, from a masculine energy to a feminine energy, and it happens every thousands of years. And it's a major shift going on in the world. And that's why everything looks a little crazy. The good news is that we are in our bodies. We're not our thoughts. We're energy. We're consciousness. We're a soul, and we are internal. So try not to freak out as much as possible with everything going on in the world. I know the banks are collapsing and all this. You know, protect yourself the best you can. You know, whatever that looks like for you, do your own research. I'm not going to give you any advice. What I do, though, is I try to get rid of as much cash and turn it into precious metals or some other asset that is going to pay me money and be protected. But aside from that, you know, I think the biggest thing we can do right now is to help one another. You know, for, I read this like 10 paragraph blog of this poor woman, family of four, husband broke her back. They can't work. They can't, it's just, and there's family after family after family after family suffering. And that's the middle class. And then the poor, it's unbelievable. So here's my suggestion. If you're struggling and you want to feel better, find someone less fortunate. I promise you, even this woman that had this horrendous story, there's someone in her life less fortunate. And if she would lift up a hand to those people less fortunate, and if we would all do that, we're going to shift our personal consciousness. You're going to be blessed very, very nicely by the creator. But more importantly, we're going to shift the consciousness throughout this whole, whole world. And that's what the world needs right now. We need community. We need love. We need togetherness. And so that's, that's my suggestion for you if you're struggling right now is to get out of yourself and help someone else. That always will bring you joy and peace and happiness. And you'll get blessed, believe me. So the other thing is, um, if you want to learn more about Mounds of Hope, go to moundsofhope.com. Uh, our first retreat is not till September. It's going to be unbelievably mind-blowing. What we're doing here is unbelievable. So uh, just sign up on, for our newsletter and stay in contact with us. We're glad you joined us. Uh, next week's subject matter is sleep. And this is a big one for me. Um, our other health coach, Kelly, will be here with us along with Sarah. And we're going to take a deep dive into hacking how we can sleep better. And that's a big issue for me. So I have a lot of questions for these girls. And um, so I hope you'll join us next week. Thanks for joining us this week. Until next time. And thank you. Let me thank my wife, Sarah, for being with us, sharing her knowledge tonight. Thank you very much for thank that. You. We appreciate it. And until next time, go out, live with passion, and create the life of your dreams. You have been listening to Mountains of Hope with Mike Murphy. Reboot and transform your physical, mental, and emotional being. Watch or listen every Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. And get the podcast on any of your favorite apps. Mountains of Hope is transformational and shows you how to detox your body, mind, and to live a spiritual life of your dreams. For more healing wisdom and information, visit MoundsOfHope.com. The Mounds of Hope Show is sponsored by The Creation Frequency. Raise your vibration and visit thecreationfrequency.com today.